What's good guys and welcome back to the channel for another video on Marvel Contest of Champions. This video is focused on a video that Kabam have recently put out. Gabe and the team put out this video talking about the Fantastic Chronicles and the ideas behind as well as the implementation of the Fantastic Four over the next one and a half years. Let's just dissect this and pick it apart scene by scene. When we met with Marvel to talk about our plans, the first thing we said was, I remember, it was, we don't want to bring the Fantastic Four to the, to the Contest of Champions because to us, they've already been there. They're just missing. Off the bat, it's important to mention that Kabam have to still answer to Marvel because it's under license. So anything they do has to be reported back. And it's good, maybe at that time they were told, like Fantastic Four, bring it into the game. And at the same time to coincide with this big all games releasing the champions and characters around Fantastic Four as we've seen Marvel Future Fight, Strike Force, etc, etc, the list goes on. It is indeed good to see this. But it's, uh, you know, it's kind of weird so they were there in the contest to begin with. They were just lost, which is kind of cool and that's why a lot of the motion comic does give us that inkling that they were lost very much at the beginning and then it's the case they're finding their way back. The same, the same thing with Silver Surfer, it's still on that journey back to the present time in the game. It's basically a one and a half year event that we're going to start in January now uh, that reveals where is the Fantastic Four, where have they been all this time and, and why, why they've been disappearing and how to bring them back. People that's been to a, a New York Comic Con. So it seems like we've got more of a longer process in hand. One and a half years in order to bring back the Fantastic Four. And will this largely be coinciding with Act 6? I think it sounds like this is a good fit for it. If we're at the moment beta testing for Chapter 1 of Act 6, then chances are if that's going to be released in the next few months, I'd say next couple of months, then that's going to say, right, well, we're going to go with releasing some chapters of Act 6 once a quarter. Yeah, that kind of does coincide. On this year, someone then got this uh, print that we made with the original 12 characters, and there's four silhouettes in the back. The more observant of the fans will see that who I'm talking about, who are the four characters that are missing from the, the 12. And do you know, I can't actually remember this print. I mean, I didn't go to New York Comic Con, but I don't know whether or not somebody kind of grabbed this and kind of pointed this out. But and he's, I know Gabe's talking about the more observant, but there's there's no there's no female up here. I mean, you could you could classify this one here as being sort of female if you kind of have the hair tight to there. But even like the characterization, yes, okay, the thing would be here. Reed Richards would be here. And then uh, Johnny Storm would be here potentially but it's like they're, they're silhouettes not even silhouettes for any kind of gender or type of character it's just assumption at the end of the day but yeah i mean that's that's a good little kind of like easter egg kind of tease there but it does then point out the question that whether or not they had that idea back earlier and the rights were actually shipped over a lot more sooner to marvel brands as well as uh, marvel related games so that's that's kind of cool and kind of interesting at the same time I suppose if they were going to do something for the cinematic universe in the future, they've got to start preparing now, especially if they want to tease something in Endgame or uh, in some post credit sequence, because do bear in mind that we are going to go into a new phase of Marvel in the cinematic universe. So if they do have the rights, planning has got to be now. But in some cases, I've heard that it's usually within like a week's notice. They have to go, right. We've got to film a post credit scene now, 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 now. Get the people, we're rolling it. They are the Fantastic Four. When the Collector came back to the Battle Realm with the Maestro to start a new contest of champions, he brought with him 12 champions from different realities. The Fantastic Four, led by Reed Richards, managed to rebel and escape. Reed Richards made a machine to try and break the Battle Realm with the help of the Silver Surfer, but the Maestro found out and he basically punched the multiverse and separated them into four different dimensions. And the Silver Surfer got punished by being sent to the beginning of time. So in the trailer, you see the Silver Surfer making his way back. He basically uses his powers to, to fly through every single moment of the, the contest, looking for the Fantastic Four, so they can try and escape and free all the, the champions of the contest. So all the pieces are falling together with the trailer, with the cutscenes, and now with the January event, 
where the I just have to stop it there because it does feel that maybe that whole kind of Galactus idea is maybe better set for a further act or a new story arc. As we know, Act 6 points the end of the story arc as we know of the Contest of Champions and where that goes into a new type of story mode or new type of story arc, we're still yet to, yet to know what's going on. But the way that, and the fact that Maestro is used in this kind of points to maybe a revenge type thing that they're going up against Maestro, even though he's been thwarted in Act 4 and going into the stuff that's the battle between the Grandmaster and the Collector. How will all this play out going into Act 6? And like I said, I do feel that we're going to either have something that's going to link in all those main and key characters, Maestro, the Collector, the Grandmaster and the Fantastic Four. Will this be something that Galactus will come into? More than likely, but maybe at an end point that maybe leads on to the new type of story and the new type of events that we're likely to see for the story mode in Marvel Contest of Champions. January event where the Silver Surfer with the help of Night Thrasher, they find the first of the members of the Fantastic Four, which is the, the thing. For things design, we actually wanted him to have both defensive and offensive capabilities. Uh, he's got some great natural defensive skills that he's going to build up over time, but then on the flip side, uh, players can actually sort of sacrifice those defenses to increase his offensive capabilities. Over time, uh, as he blocks and as he gets struck, he's going to build up what we're calling rock charges. Uh, these charges will naturally increase both his physical energy resistance, and then eventually, if he gets enough of them, uh, when he gets struck, he'll go unstoppable, which is really sweet for a defensive character. But I've personally stopped doing feature Grandmaster Crystals, so I'm not going to go out for these charges champions anymore especially because they're so trollish but the fact is the thing being added in is a good champion that I would like to get the community is still very split on the idea of him being science and cosmic and the fact is Kabam even sent up with promotional e emails that he was going to be a cosmic based champion but changed their mind very much last minute don't know why don't know why they changed their mind don't know why they kind of had that conflict but either way that's something for another day another argument but in any case, the thing being added into the game is great, especially because he's kind of like Korg 2.0 in the fact that he can be offensive and defensive. And yeah, okay, Korg has those properties to be both those champions. It's just kind of cool seeing these two kind of rock-based champions, one being more of a, well, should even though, even though it's skill being Korg, it should really be a cosmic. And the fact is, we'd all like to say the thing was a cosmic over being a science. But again, another video for another day. But players can also choose to spend some of those stacks to give him additional attack and then also add bonus effects to special attacks. The trade-off is kind of, do I want these stacks to stay on and increase his defenses, or do I want to spend them and uh, give him increased offensive abilities? Also, quick note from me on the fact of the classification side of things. How do you guys feel about the potential that all of them are going to be sciences? What about the cosmic side of things? Will any of them be cosmic? Will Kabam split them like 50-50? Two of them, Reed Richards and The Thing, are going to be science and the other two cosmic. How do people feel about that if they were to do it? And yeah, it would just be kind of odd. not only the four members, there's also the villains that we want to introduce. Diablo was an odd choice. Basically, we want to... Oh yeah, villains! Oh! Galactus, Doctor Doom, yeah. But Diablo, okay, yeah, it's a good fit to add it in. I think that's, that's kind of nice to kind of add that aspect to it. We're creating the story behind it. The smart aspect is going, okay, science, scientific-based things, chemistry, alchemy, science, yeah, okay, I dig it, I dig it. But at the same time, people were going like, right, well, if he's using those things like chemistry, alchemy, that kind of stuff, and even the case like, I know people were going like, alchemy, well, that's not real, isn't it? It's chemistry, isn't it? Technically, it is. But how does this work out with a mystical-based champion, which Diablo is? Again, long story to explain, but a lot of the kind of mystical-based knowledge and mystical-based arts when it comes to 
chemistry and uh, or aka alchemy is the reasons I think Kabam have largely put that villain in and the way it works in with the champion The Thing. If you've seen my videos then you'll know that I talk quite a lot about the fact of using elixirs in order to convert the thing back to a humanoid form. So yes, I could, I'm could. i not going to bore you to death with re-explaining that story constantly but I'm glad that Kabam got that idea and put that in. Yes, it's a weaker start. Yes, other games have decided to put in a lot of those champions, like Doctor Doom, and players are like, oh, this is great, but Kabam are on a slow burn. Obviously, from a business perspective, they want to make money, so they're going to be waiting for them to enter into featured Grandmaster Crystals over the space of the year. They, are they going to like shovel the champions at you in one given time? No, because they have a strict rule of two to three champions release per month. Diablo was an odd choice. Basically, we want to uh, add a mystic Fantastic Four villain to the to the game. It's a very uh, typical hand rubbing character, you know, like the villain with the mustache and stuff. So I thought it would be interesting to try and do a twist on that character with the potions and the alchemy and stuff like that. Yeah, I think we pulled it off. Diablo is a master alchemist first and foremost, and we really wanted to capture that in his design. He has four primary concoctions that he can brew, one that lets him heal his wounds, one that lets him nullify his opponent's effects, and a couple others that are more combat and damage focused. Diablo is designed from the ground up to be a quest focused champion, and it's really up to the player to decide when's the right time to use a concoction, and which concoction is the right one to use against each particular fight that might be coming along in a quest. Diablo is a good reminder why you should stay off the source. Have you seen some of the designs? Yeah, it's crazy. Stay off the source, kids, and you won't look like this. Of course, we're going to find the other uh, members of Fantastic Four and where they are and what kind of villains they're going to be uh, fighting against. So the thing will be now, and then during this year, we're going to drop the other ones but it's going to be spaced out because you have to like, go through the story and see what each one of them are and what kind of villains, classic villains and interesting uh, characters we're going to meet along with the... the classic villains, Gabe! I, I see... Uh, 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 I see what he did there. That, that could mean that we'll probably see Doctor Doom. Galactus? Man, I, don't, I don't know. Now I'm thinking about it. It may be a bit too much too soon unless, like I said, plans are Act 6. Collectors, or definitely after that, the kind of the post-credit tease is that the story arc for the new type of story, a new story quest, is going to be centered around Galactus. Either way, it could be quite exciting. We never thought of a contest of champions without the Fantastic Four. So it means a lot that we finally can materialize them into the game. Especially now, you know, with the, the passing of Stan Lee and everything that you love about the Fantastic Four has been there since the beginning. It's such a great, uh, you know, family of characters. I want to do a homage to those two, Stan Lee and also Jack Kirby, you know, two guys that brought the greatest comic book magazine to life and changed comics forever. And I think the Fantastic Four is something special and, I, and Marvel knows about it. So we want to do justice to those characters. So, you know, somewhere Stan Lee and Jack Kirby can be proud of us, you know, and our little contribution to the Marvel Universe through the Fantastic Four and the story we want to tell. So there we have it, folks. We've got all the information we need to tease us for the Fantastic Chronicles. Part one, obviously, is Diablo and The Thing. And it will be going through the various different months that's going to be released, probably once a quarter or maybe a bit more spaced out. And it's going to be an exciting time. Whether or not this links into Act 6, just don't know at the moment. Will it link into something else for a new story? Possibly. Will we see Galactus? Yes, it could look more likely we will see that at a later date. You can't go big unless you go the biggest. And the biggest is Galactus. Unless it's something to do with uh, an Elder or Celestial, then yeah. But I have seen some comic book stuff from time to time where Galactus was able to kind of consume a Celestial. So you, he can go big. The man can go big or the being can go big. Either way, thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button and speculate in the comment section below what all this stuff means. Make sure to share as well to somebody that's maybe in the community. I've been Rich the Man and I shall catch you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.